we can start with the data. So we can start with the, the study that was done about custom plates, which was done by Ed Ellis. And what he did was he was able to show that residents in the operating room were more capable of achieving an accurate result with maxillary positioning using custom plates as opposed to a splint and um, bending plates. And that those were the residents that were doing the surgeries. And so that's great, right? Why wouldn't you do custom plates in that scenario then? If a resident could be better and more accurate, then uh, awesome but I'm not a resident. So do I, do I need a custom plate? Well, then I have to ask the other questions about custom plating. So what are those issues? You are, you're beholden to two things with a custom plate. You're beholden to the engineer and the tech's ability to segment the volume file, which is basically deciding the threshold of the density and the resolution of the surface that and i've asked engineers and they say hey it's pretty good you know so i'll go with it sure it's pretty good but then the second thing you're beholden to is that the physiology of the body allows you to do what you plan so that's the second step and i think that is an important one that you know is is the occlusion, for example, that you're going to establish going to change the vector and movements of the bones in the exact same way that your splint and or your occlusion is telling you it's going to? And I think that's where a lot of the variability is. And so if you get uh, inaccuracies, that's where it's going to land, at least in the upper jaw. And, and there's muscle resistance, right? So if you had some muscle resistance, you know, maybe it's more difficult to make the jaw go to that position. Um, that's technique driven and we can talk about that. But so those are the two main things in the upper jaw. Now there's custom plates in the lower jaw, which uh, again, personal bias, like I would, I would never do. And the reason is, is because you're beholden, number one, to the record that you're gathering before surgery. So the patient is awake and brings to that appointment all of the posturing of their jaw relative to their bad bite. And you are asking the oral surgeon or maybe the assistant, I don't know, or they're disregarding it altogether and having the patient bite down in the scan or with the lips together, which we've discussed, which would displace the jaw joints, even a small amount. If those jaw joints are not, if those jaw joints are in a different position in the office than they are with the patient on the table and you apply your custom plates your surgery is wrong because the jaw joints will seat post-surgery. So that's, that's comment number one. Comment number two is the jaw joints or the proximal fragment of the, of the lower jaw. This part right here, the back part that's yeah, the back connected part. to the joint. Yep. That part never stays exactly where it was pre-op. If you always maintained the proximal fragment exactly where it was in the office and advanced the lower jaw, for example, that lower jaw is going to interfere here. And the angles, which are in a more in position relative to the front, now you're taking the front and bringing it forward, making it wider relative to where the angles are that if you leave the angles where they are and advance the jaw, they're gonna have this really square face here in the front with the angles being in. Almost like an MSDO type movement. 
yeah, so this front just gets big and this stays put. Right. So always those those proximal fragments change slightly, not so much as to cause compression or damage, but they change. And to think that the surgeon knows exactly how that proximal fragment is going to be positioned at the time of surgery, given bone interferences and muscle situations and a host of other things, ligament laxity in the joint, how the surgeon actually holds the proximal fragment when they put the hardware on. Like, even for me, I've analyzed if I hold it one way versus another way, it's different. So actually right side versus left side, different. You have to be aware of all these little intricacies of how things change. So the chance that your joint on your 3D planning is exactly where that joint's gonna be in the operating room is close to zero. What are we talking about though? Are we, are, are we talking about quarter millimeter, half millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeters? We're probably in that scenario only talking about a couple of millimeters, right? I mean, honestly, and in fact, if you look at jaw surgery, the average inaccuracy in positioning the lower incisor at surgery, the acceptable average inaccuracy runs between two and four millimeters. That's absurd. I agree, but we accept it. We accept it so much that the articles that are published won't start counting an inaccuracy until it reaches the threshold of two millimeters. So if I, so am I willing to live with that? Well, I am not personally. Um, I couldn't live with that both because the bite fitting together won't tolerate two millimeters of inaccuracy. And at that point, the surgeon doesn't care anyway. They're like, here, orthodontist, you fix it, <clears throat> um, which is unfair. But so without custom plates at all, at, as a whole, surgeons are very inaccurate. With custom plates, maybe more accurate, but at the same time, there's always going to be a discrepancy. Um, and if you take on the average, maybe you're better with the custom plates than you were without them. And that's great. You recognize that that's the case. You do it that way. In my hands, uh, I would not uh, tolerate that in my brain or as a result. So I'm going to, I have an entire like technique of applying plates, how I apply plates, what the physics is of tightening a screw, the order of the screw, how the screw engages the plate, where the plates go in the osteotomy, where the screw holes go how I hold the jaw joint, how my assistant retracts the tissues when the screws go in and when the jaw joint is uh, seated. These are all aspects that influence accuracy and inaccuracy, all of which we control for. So I am, and we, like I said, I've studied it all. Our average inaccuracy is about 0.4 millimeters, but our voxel size when we did that study was 0.4. So we are somewhere in the realm of the ability to actually measure our inaccuracy. The best part about it was is when I did that study and I applied a lot of the things I'm talking about. So I looked at before uh, making changes and then after making changes technique wise, the standard deviation dropped uh, immensely. So the standard deviation or the plot scores on this side were really varied. On this side with the techniques, the standard deviation was so much smaller. So that, that is also a sign of accuracy. Okay, so what am I saying? If you're better using custom plates, use them. Great. Uh, and better meaning more accurate and able to achieve what you plan. Okay, that's great. Use them. For me, I, nowadays, as you would imagine, everybody's asking Dr. Gunson to use custom plates. <laughs> my fault. <laughs> and I, and, and my, my answer, I, I jokingly, I always say, yes, I custom bend every plate <laughs> you know, to your, to your position, to your job position. 
Why? I love bending plates. I mean, I can bend them and I understand there, there's a whole understanding when you've done it long enough, you know how the jaws move, you know where the zone of bone is, you know the shape of the plate, the plating system I use, they're not right angle like L plates. They have a very specific curvature to them that is made to actually align with where the bones are. And then I know where the bends are. I can actually look at a look at the gap and I can bend the plate and then try it in and I'm pretty close. And then it's about micro adjustments at that point. So I feel good about what I'm able to do and that's me. And I will continue to do that. 